Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. When one thinks of style icons, few come above Paul Newman. Paul Newman was a renegade, a man of many hats. He was an accomplished actor and philanthropist, a race car driver and an entrepreneur. His effortless style was a sight to behold, and his watches have moved markets. Let's take a closer look at this style icon, including what made him who he was, as well as some of the hallmarks of this style. How was Paul Newman always stylish? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Paul Newman, an icon of male cool. To say Paul Newman was a star would be an understatement. There are few areas in life where he didn't succeed. Charming audiences with those brilliantly blue eyes, Newman held a treasured place on the silver screen for over 50 years, appearing in a host of classics that include The Colour of Money, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, and Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. But even as a revered actor, Paul Newman still found more room for triumph, this time in the world of fashion. The cinematic legend continues to be admired today for his strong sense of style, from sharp tailoring to relaxed basics. There are few things that Newman couldn't sport without his signature effortless flair. No matter how casual or buttoned up a man is, he should still carry himself as a gentleman every step of the way. When it comes to sartorical icons such as Newman, there is almost something intangible to them. They seem to have an inherent eye for clothing, one that's nigh on impossible to imitate. Most male icons of the last century were known only for one style. It's hard to picture Cary Grant in anything other than a suit. James Dean's rebel attire obviously consisted only of t-shirts and jeans, while Steve McQueen was mostly portrayed as the rugged guy with an unbuttoned or even no shirt. And then there was Paul Newman, who could do it all. The blue-eyed actor had a cool charisma of intelligence and good humour. He appeared confident but not arrogant, casual but never slacking. A fun guy to be around, but definitely serious about his business, whether it was acting or directing, racing, charity work or political activism. But it's not these qualities as a professional and private man we're out to praise in this video, but rather his off-hand cool and confident style that still comes across in every film and every photograph so many years after his heyday as a movie star and celebrity, out of many aspects of his persona as a male style icon. Study any image of Newman and you will notice how he simply cannot fail to look cool regardless of what he's wearing. This confidence combined with his handsome good looks was quite the combination behind the camera, but Newman was more than just an actor. A story of wardrobe classics with a peppy American twist, Paul Newman's style was refined and utterly timeless. Who wouldn't want to use him as a point of inspiration? In the 60s he was a hustler, an hombre, and bare cool hands as he began his aspiring career as one of the most iconic American actors of our time. Handsome with striking blue eyes, Paul Newman was born in Cleveland, Ohio on January 26, 1925. His father was of Jewish-German descent, and his mother was a Catholic whose family came from Hungary. Living an idyllic childhood, Newman grew up as an athlete, but an injury ended Newman's dream of a sports career. He joined Kenyon College in Ohio on a scholarship, where his passion for drama started. But he was expelled, supposedly after an incident involving a keg of beer and the rector's car. He acted in plays throughout his college career and with the support of his parents decided to try and make it a full-time career after graduating. However, after his father's passing, a few years later, Newman turned to Cleveland to run the family business. But after 18 months, the business was handed to his brother as Newman decided to try again, but this time concentrate on directing at Yale University. In the summer of 1952, right after leaving Yale, Newman got a small part in a Broadway play. That snowballed into segments on live television and then eventually joining the esteemed actor's studio in New York as a student. 
Newman joined actors such as James Dean and Marlon Brando in lessons as he continued to audition for roles. He enlisted in the US Naval Reserve. He had hoped for the heroic role of a fighter pilot, but this dream also disappeared when it was determined that he was slightly colorblind. Newman instead served as a radio man in the South Pacific for three years. He moved to New York City with his first wife, Jackie White. There he found roles on Broadway and television. Newman's debut film was the biblical epic The Silver Chalice, where he played a silversmith who crafted the Holy Grail. A box office failure, it helped springboard him towards other roles, but he found himself competing with others. He lost out to James Dean for the lead in East of Eden, and his roles were sporadic. But after James Dean passed away in 1956, Newman was cast as the boxer Rocky Graziano in Somebody Up There Likes Me, which had originally been set aside to Dean. But when Dean died in a car crash in September of 1956, Newman was asked to take the lead. He hesitated, but his role in the adaptation of a story by Ernest Hemingway revived his reputation and his faith in his abilities. The 1957 hit made the actor into an overnight sensation, and Warner Brothers signed Newman to a seven-year contract. Following that role, Newman found himself as the lead more often. Hungry for a chance to prove himself, Newman asked the director if he could play a part on the road, to which the director, Joshua Logan, refused. Newman, Logan said, did not possess the sexual charisma required for the character. Newman adopted a new attitude. He began working out, but more importantly, he began observing others and their behaviour. It was also around this time that he met actress Joanne Woodward, and the chemistry between the two dissolved Newman's first marriage. However, Newman's failures would be few and far between. He would go on to rack up nine Academy Award nominations in his career, starting with his role as Brick Pollitt in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, opposite Elizabeth Taylor. Newman enjoyed his greatest fame as a film actor in the 1960s and 70s, when he became known not only for his steely blue eyes and overall good looks, but for the consistently high quality of his acting. Similar roles followed, with similar results. For the 1963 drama HUD and the mournful prison picture Cool Hand Luke, one of 1967's biggest box office successes, Newman again won nominations, but did not win the Oscar in either instance. Subsequent roles in period pieces such as 1969's Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and the 1973's The Sting again teamed him with Robert Redford and did phenomenally well. Later in the decade, Newman's career took a slight downturn. His only admirable portrayal came as a vicious minor league hockey coach in the 1977 cult classic Slapshot. Personal tragedy also visited Newman. In 1978, his son from his first marriage, Scott, died of a drug and alcohol overdose. Newman would later fund a drug rehabilitation facility in Los Angeles in honour of his son. His acting continued to achieve excellence, and when Newman worked on the 1969 film Winning, he discovered that he loved racing cars. He chose to devote time to it from then on, even racing into his 70s and 80s. Just like everything else he tried, he was good at it. Acting in 65 movies over the course of 50 years, Newman played tragic figures, anti-heroes and rebellious figures. He had effortless charm, and it shone through each role he took on, and later in each film he directed. But Paul Newman wasn't just about acting, he was so much more. Alongside his career in film, he was known for his charitable work and, of course, the eponymous Newman's Own. Now found on grocery shelves across the country, Newman's Own was started when he decided to sell some of his homemade salad dressing, just for fun. But as it took off, he enlisted his writer friend A. E. Hotchner to help him. Almost three decades later, Newman's Own has expanded into a food empire with a wide variety of offerings. According to the company, all profits are donated to charity. He also created hole-in-the-wall gang camps after the outlaw gang in Butch Cassidy and where most of the profits for Newman's Own went. These camps were designed to offer free recreation for children with serious and debilitating illnesses, and Newman continued to be actively involved in the cause throughout his life. 
He was also an incredibly successful race car driver, even competing at Daytona as a 70th birthday gift for himself. Paul Newman is the perfect example of classic yet preppy style. More of an understated macho man, Paul Newman's style wasn't about flash, but about combining wardrobe basics into stylish outfits that looked put together without being overly done. Penny loafers, button-downs and of course a well-tailored suit were the hallmarks of his style, but there's so much more to it. Few could pull off a suit quite like Newman, always classic and in neutral colours and darker tones, his choices were exemplary. Before the sickening days of celebrity stylists, Newman shows how good a well-tailored suit can complement your body shape. He's gone for a two-button, single-breasted jacket with wide, padded shoulders that accentuate his athletic physique, as well as high-waisted, straight-legged trousers, which make him appear taller. Wearing loafers, as he often did, he adds a slice of Americana prep. But here they feature a plain front, as opposed to the apron front that defines a penny loafer. The slim, squared-off tie finishes off a smart look, perfect for the office. Paul had a pretty broad selection of unconventional jackets and coats that only added to his own particular brand of anti-establishment cool. He'd often incorporate racer jackets into his look. He was, in his natural habitat, cool and nonchalant, smoking a cigarette and not really looking all that interested, with a flight jacket suggesting he could take off at any moment. Paul also had an extensive collection of army jackets that would throw some new interest into the classic jeans and boot ensemble of the time. Throw your personality into the mix. Style isn't possible without personality. Paul Newman never went without a watch. It's an incredibly stylish accessory that is also functional. A win-win. To get the Newman feel, opt for a more vintage style with leather bands in chocolate brown or black and smaller dials. Or of course you can also go for another classic Newman brand, the Rolex Daytona. But good luck finding one. He was a famed collector and his watches were famously attributed to higher sales of vintage Rolexes, including the record-breaking Paul Newman Daytona. Whether parted and slicked back in the 1950s, letting his natural curls do their thing in the 1960s, or sporting a grey to white mop, sideburns and even a moustache or full beard in later decades. His hair was always done, but never overdone, the trim looking like it's been two weeks since he left the barber's chair at all times, never fashionable, but always casually in tune with the times and his age, not vain or trendy at all, but absolutely self-conscious and spreading an air of effortless gentleman class. Although he quit smoking in the late 70s, Newman was a heavy smoker for many years, like many of his generation, and he eventually succumbed to lung cancer in 2008, aged 83. No matter what the man wore, it made an impact because of how effortless it came across while still being stylish and aesthetically pleasing. That's one of the reasons he is such an icon of style. He shows that anyone can do it. Men wanted to be him, all denim jeans and attitude the anti-hero that he depicted on the screen. While Newman isn't around anymore, he passed away in 2008, his style is still out there. You can see glimpses if you know what to look for, and Paul himself will always be remembered as one of the silver screen men from the past who changed the way fashion looked, and for the better. Indeed, he continues to serve as a source of inspiration for us, reminding us that classic style with subtle but unique twists will always be cool. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Paul Newman? He was one of America's most beloved actors.